I would give the pain a 10. Um, a lot of people do tell you it's not that bad and things like that, but me personally, it hurt it really, 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 really bad. Being a baby mama is not a flex, and I said what I said. Well, I'd rather be a baby mama than be a miserable wife. Girl, majority of the women that be saying that, she ain't never been a wife a day in her life. She wouldn't know a good man if a good man stood in front of her and said, I'm a good man. Second of all, if she was a miserable wife, that had everything to do with her husband and nothing to do with marriage. Lastly, miserable wives can get spousal support. Ain't no such thing as baby mama and baby daddy support. Well, being a single mom is a flex because we be making it happen. Two plus two equaling four does not take away from the fact that three plus three equals six. Six, meaning two things can be true at the same time. Yes, by the grace of God, I am a successful single mother. But no, I do not support baby mama culture. This is what I be telling you, young ladies. There are a lot of women that you will meet that want you to be just as miserable as them. So take it from me as a single mother. As quick as he wants you to get down on both of your knees for him, he should have no issue getting down on one knee for you. If we're being honest here, yeah, being a baby mama is never a flex neither is it going to ever be a flex we need to stop promoting such culture it's never going to help anybody if I'm... let's 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 be for real it's never going to end well stop being a baby mama marry before you carry but let's continue the video my biggest fear is, is being a baby mama like you yeah, know i can't i'm gonna need a rock on my finger before you put a baby in my belly because um I see it firsthand. Like I just refuse to be a baby mama. No, no, we're having a a baby. No, we're not. Ladies, do you realize that most of these men get us pregnant simply to turn us into permanent side chicks? You shouldn't be proud to be a baby mother. Really, like, why does our community glorify being a baby mother? We're starting to realize that men do not want to be fathers. The only reason they get us pregnant is to trap us and control us and to slow us down so that they can stay on top of us. And they want to make us permanent side chicks. They feel like once we have their child that we are in debt to sleep with them for the rest of our lives. Being a baby mother is whack. I don't even want to be called a baby mother. I, I just hate the sound of it. I hate the title. Like it's it's so corny to be a fucking baby mother or to have a man address you as his baby mother can we cancel that shit one thing i know for a fact i would never be a baby mama again i would never wrongfully choose the father of my kids again and i mean that because choosing the wrong person to procreate with choosing um a man irresponsibly will definitely cost you cost you where you will be raising your child by yourself you will solely be the provider doing majority of the work and not just financially but it's so much more that comes with raising raising children and that's a problem in today's society especially with our people a lot of us are single parents because we wrongfully choose the type of men to lay down with i truly believe if we allow god to guide us um with our person before we give our body to Everything is going to work out is exactly how it's supposed to. If we do some real healing and that way we attract quality people, we won't be in this game like this. You know what I'm saying? If we vet properly, check, pe check people's character, check their heart posture, figure out what it is that you stand firm on, what a man has to be to even become your, hus become your husband and become the father of your kids, man, you'll be weaving so much to this unnecessary mess out. Only if I knew what I knew now at the age of 17, at the age of 16, shit, at the age of 13 when I gave my body away. <sighs> yeah, don't submit to this culture lifestyle, honey. If you don't have kids, leave them right where they are until marriage. One thing I do like about social media, they are pushing out marriages. When I was growing up, I didn't see any of that. I thought it was pride in being a baby mother. Like, that's what I seen in my family. Only if TikTok was prevalent back in my days. <laughs> I'm talking about when I was in high school. Because I'm at a stage in my life where I don't even submit to the boyfriend, girlfriend culture anymore. I don't even speak on that topic. It's marriage. When it's time for me to really date and be serious, I'm looking for marriage. I'm looking for, I'm looking for marriage. I'm looking for husband potential, somebody... Um, that I would be proud of to raise my daughter and my sons with. 
my future children with. <laughs> Ooh. And sometimes it hurt because, you know, once you broaden your horizons, you look at life different. It's like, damn, you see what your child is going without, unfortunately, without that two-parent household, without two healthy parents. Even if it's a co-parent type of thing, you still need two healthy people that two healthy people that know their role when it comes to a child. So make sure when it's time to bring children, if you're thinking about it, first of all, hand to hand, vet that man properly. Make sure that man has the abilities to be your husband first off and have the abilities to be the father and role model to your future children. So I'm at work listening to this podcast and this girl said that her baby daddy faked his death to get out of paying child support. She said his mom called her hysterically crying and was like he got in a fatal accident and didn't make it. Fast forward to the funeral, she wasn't allowed to go because his sister had a restraining order against her, but their five-year-old son went. And her son came back from the funeral like really sad and was like he didn't get a chance to say goodbye because there wasn't a casket. So she's just thinking that they end up getting him cremated. So she's trying to explain that to her son. So her son starts saying stuff like, I seen daddy today. And she's just thinking he grieving. And then it just started getting weird because one day he came home from school and was like, daddy came to have lunch with me. So she go to the school to talk to the psychiatrist because at this point she think her baby is going crazy. So the principal ended up coming out and talked to her was like, yeah, he was here a few days ago and had lunch with him because he's still on the emergency checkout. And she was like, well, that's impossible because he died. And like everybody in the front office is looking at her like she crazy. So she ended up driving an hour away to his mom's house with her husband like banging on the door and then his mom opens the front door and she see her baby daddy running off in the background. Come to find out he had one of his family friends fake a death certificate for his mom to present to court and now he's serving six years in prison because he faked his death and her story is going to premiere on the ID channel sometime next year. Do you know how fucked up you got to be to fake your death to keep from taking care of your child like what the fuck be going through people's mind like that is insane i feel like the mom and the family friends should be held accountable too because y'all was all in this shit together like that's a fucked up family play us fuck up <laughs> play us fuck up all the time i was pissed i had a less than ideal co-parenting day the other day so let's talk about how i'm dealing with the conflict if you're new here my name's caitlin i'm a single mom and i'm in therapy to learn how to co-parent with my child's father so my therapist told me to just let him have his visits and kind of keep myself separate. So he's downstairs. I'm pretty much upstairs in my room the whole time. His visitation on Saturdays is from 8 to 12, but he had asked my parents, because I live at my parents' house, he had asked my parents about extra time, which made them uncomfortable because it's my child, not theirs. <laughs> so I went downstairs to talk to him about that, and I told him, like, don't do that. <laughs> But it led to like a rabbit hole conversation because just of other things, I'm not going to get into the details of what actually happened, but it just, it was conflict and I shut the conversation down because I could sense that it was spiraling downward. He of course did not like this because he wanted to talk, but there was nothing for us to talk about because it had nothing to do with the child. We did not need to spiral down that rabbit hole conversation. So I walked away. Well, first I tried shutting it down, but he wouldn't. So I just walked away. But from this, what I'm doing, I'm not straying off my boundaries. I knew that conversation needed to be shut down because it was not going to go anywhere. And even though the other party may be unhappy with the decisions you make to stick to your boundaries, you have to stick to them and not let anybody make you feel bad or guilt you into doing anything that you know you shouldn't be doing. Especially in a co-parenting situation, when you start to get a little bit too lax, a little bit too comfortable, it can go wrong. So for me and my situation, I just have to keep it more business so that he can understand we have a child together and that's it. My problem is though that like when I keep things like that, the energy between us is like completely different. Like I'm still able to be cool. I can have the conflict. I can know that there's been a disagreement and still be welcoming and still be cool. But he's not able to do that yet. Hopefully he will eventually. It's just awkward because his energy just gets really like uninviting and it's just it's really awkward because i'm trying to like keep the vibe cool and he's just like over it and i'm it's weird but co-parenting is a journey just because i'm in a certain headspace does not mean that he's going to be there hopefully he will be but co-parenting is hard it is a journey it takes time to figure out but i will say therapy is the best thing for us so far we've been seeing the same therapist separately and it really helps 
because he's able to communicate to both of us and kind of help us get through to each other. He's like our messenger. So I will be talking about this incident this week in my therapy. But biggest takeaway from this video is do not let go of your boundaries ever, no matter what. Don't let anybody guilt you. Don't let anybody make you feel bad for having boundaries. Stick to what you know is right for you. One thing I wish I knew before I became a mother, sis, nobody talks about how hard it is to become a mother and be a good mother after surviving a narcissistic mother. Nobody talks about how hard it is to parent your child different than your mother parented you. So now as a mother, not only am I trying to parent my child, but I'm trying to reparent myself. I have to literally rewire my entire thinking in order to not put my daughter through what I went through. I'm constantly battling myself trying to not be like her telling myself that i didn't deserve the childhood that i had and i'm constantly taking accountability as a mother because i know that the only thing that i've ever wanted from my mom was that what do you think women say when when they make statements like oh i didn't plan to be a baby mama it just happened oh i didn't plan to raise these kids by myself it just happened oh don't tell me to choose better better uh, baby fathers i thought he was a good man even though he wasn't good to me i thought he was going to be a good father what do you think they mean by that let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section and if you've had experience being a baby mama kindly share what your experience has been and also if you're a guy that impregnated a, a girl tell us how that happened don't forget to like and subscribe guys bye